the economic pie. In Valdostalans County, Georgia has been proven to be unjust, unfair, and discriminatory. These patterns and practices have existed for too long while only benefiting those in the clique and among the slicks. Today, concerned citizens are demanding immediate change. St. John 8.32, Joel 2 verse 1. GBR. With $25 million we spent a year over the next 10 years to revitalize the city and help the low-income area. These areas have been neglected and excluded for years and years. And for the first time, we have someone in, in the position as mayor, city mayor, that is willing to sit down to talk about making some progression. And this is what we need the assistance, to, to get assistance for the city. We weren't acting for no funds for our organization of any kind. We was asking that the city request from the federal government for assistance and aid because what they're getting now is for a budget that keep things just maintained as normal. We got a city that's 51 to 53 percent black, okay? And out of that 53 percent, 51 to 53 percent, there's at least 46 percent live below the poverty level which earn less than $10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And that's pathetic when it comes down to uh, people being able to live to a certain level and a certain standard. If it, if it brings about poverty in the area, it brings about a burden upon the city and a burden upon the government because people are getting federal assistance that, because they can't find jobs, because of the economic instability. Mm -hmm. All we want you guys to do is to assist our mayor and helping us to get this request for some kind of federal funding that can help aid the city of Valdosta. This lady here is in business for herself and she can't get the assistance that she needs because of redlining in the city. The federal government, uh, J-Quad out of Texas, did the analysis of impediments for the disparity study and they found evidence of redlining in the city. And that's part of that, and it's part of the fight that he has to try to fight to make corrections in. Mm -hmm. The only way we're going to get something done is by working together and formulating something. Now, we didn't want to file litigation, and we threatened the litigation. We got it pending now. So, therefore, we found that by him wanting to negotiate and have an open forum like we have here now, mm -hmm. that we decided that we'll hold off of that and see if we make something work. And, and to make that formulation work, we do need your assistance and to help him, to help us to bring about changes in the city, mm -hmm. all the way to the banking industry. We got people that, that is having to put up 100% of their own monies and getting funding outside the circle of the bank because of the redlining mm -hmm. and all this kind of thing because you're from a geographical area and if you're from this area, you can't get the assistance that's required. Um, do you believe that you guys will be able to help him to assist us? So we're committed to working uh, with the community here uh, to bring as much funding into this community as, as possible. And in fact, one of the things we've talked about today is we're looking to hire somebody to join our, our, our operation that's based in Valdosta to cover this region so that we have somebody who's here day to day kind of seeing the needs of the community um, so that we can work on those issues firsthand. Okay, so I'm it's a priority for the senator. I'm and I'll take that position. <laughs> okay, I'll ask, I'll, that's what I was going to ask next. Whenever you guys do formally through the mayor and his staff, that we have someone like Miss Teen on that board, someone that's got interest, someone like uh, Pastor Neil, someone like Joyce Ryan's. I don't have to be on anything. Mm -hmm. But as long as we got the right people in place, if I believe in is bringing the right people together. Mm -hmm. Things don't just happen, you have to make them happen, and you make them happen through the right minds. I might not know all the answers or have the answers, but I do know that between everybody and the collaboration between everyone, we can make some changes and bring prosperity back to this city. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the formulation of that committee, we'd like to get a commitment from you guys that you have someone 
like Miss Tina, like, like, like Neil, Pastor Neil, or George Ryan, someone that be on there to make certain that our interest is being heard and, and, and being done. Well, I want to take a different standpoint. And I'm looking at the fact that we are sitting six blocks, seven blocks, away from where people are sleeping behind tree lines right now. Mm -hmm. Veterans who fought for this country. I'm one man, and the mayor speaks of my passion all the time, and the reason that passion is there is because I'm tired of meeting in spots like this, mm -hmm. and promises being made, and nothing being done. Or a meeting like this, and what is considered a solution is to come up with an economic plan that still excludes the very people who need it. If this city is to survive, then we've got to change the way we're doing that. We're sitting six blocks, seven, eight maybe max, where there are people sleeping in the tree line, extended another mile down the road, their families sleeping in disabled vans, where children are being allowed to call that a home address, mm -hmm. where it hurts me to ride down that road and I go broke daily, giving out the last dollars I have in my pocket to people who we love to just cast off and say are just standing there because they want to be there or because they're running a scam or they make more money than us. I stand with people and pray with people who are living out of their cars mm -hmm. right down this road. And there's money in place that could help. And we do nothing. There's no way all of these minds can sit in this room and we can't come up with a plan. I sit in this very room and I shook the mayor's hand and hugged him and even ask for his forgiveness for being so aggressive with him. But I think it's because he recognizes the passion I have for people. Mm -hmm. I'm not just a pastor in name or somebody who gives good speeches on Sunday, but I care about the people of the city, black, white, green, yellow. But this old regime has to disappear. Any echo, any footprint, of it, it's gotta go. There are laws in the books right now that allow us to get away with doing wrong and nobody even as much as gets slapped on the wrist. Laws that tell us that it's okay to make this building historically preserved but this one not and this building get funded and that one not. That has to do with money. Here it is, 2023. And I'm still having to beg for the black community to get sidewalks. Here in 2023, we still have streets that have no street lights. And what we are passing as a transit system, a ride share. Sometimes my wife uses that ride share. This ride share tells her to ride in a dark spot in a drug community. Nobody even bothered to see where these spots are. People who are just crying out for food. What do we do? How can we sit back and have all this money in our hands and pretend that we are looking out for the next man? Us coming here this morning has got to be about a real solution. It's got to start with healing and mending old wounds. There's got to be some plan put in place that says it doesn't matter what my skin looks like, but that man is in need and he needs help. Somebody's got to want to do something different. I'll die doing it if I have to, but I can't sit back any longer and pretend that, that, that this town can go on like it is. Because if it does, it's a reflection of Jim Crow era. It is. We're in a town where we just sat in this very room and admitted 
that 200 plus million dollars was spent upon the wealthy and white community here and less than two million in the black community. We sat in this room and said this and admitted it was wrong. So now we gotta actively do something about it or we have created the deficit and we have, this town created the disparity. The same railroad tracks that say she can't be funded in her building because she sits on one side of the road tracks funds buildings on the other side of the road tracks. I'm a former cop. And if I was still working and in this city, right there in that little three, four block radius, it's okay to walk around the street and drink on the corners because it makes more money. Six blocks this way, I lock everybody up in the black community for doing the same thing you're doing down here and celebrating and it's calling it industry, revenue. But this way, it's a crime. We are lopsided. We've got to balance out this town. This town is set up backwards. College kids graduate and won't stay here. No kid stays here. They leave, they disappear, and they don't come back. This old town has got to change. There's got to be something different. I'm still walking among families that are literally standing in poverty lines. Literally poverty lines that look like the 1930s. Second Harvest Food Bank, Christmas times, Thanksgiving. Gives away boxes and bags of food. And people are lined up all the way around the block. Several blocks lined up just to get one box of food. That should not be happening in a metropolitan city like Valdosta, Georgia. And in that line, they're white people, they're black people, they're Latinos. We just happen to be the group of people who are at the bottom of the food chain in this town. It's got to change. And I, and I mean, we can sit here and talk uh, 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 ideas and shop ideas, but something's got to happen. And I do know that drive is in Senator War. Now, we come from the exact same church. We're both from Ebenezer, Ebenezer Baptist Church. There's something about coming out of that church that's just different. It's birthed a lot of fighters and leaders, and I'm one of them fighters. Okay. I'm not going to stop until we and, get something done. And, and what we're, we're saying is, like on, okay, like for instance, the, um, the new center that they got over here, the, um, where we have all the concerts and stuff. Yeah. Right, the, the new center. We want to see stuff like that on the south side. I, I know about the, the apartments coming up on Griffin Avenue, what you're doing with the library, but what about the center of town where, where we black folks actually have businesses and still do have businesses. That's why my business is there. We have funerals on there, a couple of barbershops there. We want to be able to bring more businesses into the area. People are staying away from that area because of, you know, um, nothing's there. Well, we're trying to make a difference there. And maybe if we can get some help to, like the building that's, I, I believe you might, you might have seen it, that has a uh, standard up. The Cola Building. Yeah, the Cola, the building. Liberty Theater. Yeah, Liberty Theater. All right, that used to be a prosperous area for black people. They had businesses over there, and uh, that's why I brought my business back in the area. I should have been Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, and, and so we want to, besides funeral homes, we want to bring some, it's a lot of land over there. Mm -hmm. So we want people to, you know what I envision that area? You, you ever been in Remington, how they used to have, and I used to work to the uh, cotton mill back in the day before I left out Austin. But they used to have those little houses that where people lived in them. Now they got businesses in those houses. I can see that over there on that on that side of town. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could bring in tourism and and, and bring in something mm -hmm. to, to get people to come back. Because now we finna have a the apartment complex not far from the center. And you're gonna have all those people coming in the area, the library. Why not fix the whole thing? Over on the south side. So, so that's the exact five block circumference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. Measure? Yeah, it's the same, same measure? yeah, and that's that's what we're looking at to, to bring uh, your south side recreation is right around the corner. Bring economics back so people will have something. They want to come back and stay. One 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 person, even the mayor, said 
Nick, he looked at the area, now I don't want to come over there. We don't want people not wanting to come. We want them to come just like they come out. What, they got a Dunkin' Donut? They got so much on the north side. I mean, everything is coming. All out there on perimeter. We want to have a whole that mm -hmm. progress. The whole. That's right. And and, and by we being redlined, that kept up, that kept a lot of stuff right. out. And I like to say this, that's why we are requesting the, the request for the two hundred and fifty million dollars, twenty-five million dollars spent a year for the next ten years. Um and looking at the the um funds for the tax incentive that can maintain just like they maintain streets here and, and have something that can constantly feed into the community each year. So do you believe that you're gonna be able to help? You heard everything they're saying here and it's absolutely fact and true. And the mayor has made preparations for us to be able to move forward and try to work together to bring things about so we can prevent the former delegation. That's why we're here today. And uh, that being said, do you really believe that you guys will be able to help the mayor to accomplish our goal? I think, uh, you know, one of the things we've, we've talked about throughout the day today is how um, we believe we're situating ourselves uh, in the way the center you know, has, has oriented the goals for the office and how to work with our different communities where we can tackle all these you know different areas uh, you know within this community uh, through the appropriations process through the grant process through the different federal agencies and, you know where we have the ability to impact things is through federal funds, through the earmark process, through the grant process, through other things like that. Um, and so, whether it's, you know, we were talking about grants leaving the recreation center today, right. maybe there were some ideas you had on things that they may not have applied for before. Right. That we maybe would have so directed with a health historic center. designation would have been okay. a mm -hmm. grant. Mm -hmm. so, Mr. Mayor, um, we want to thank you for making it possible for us to, you, we did agree, and you did what the city was going to do. Uh, it means a lot to us as for working in truth, okay? And we, we're gonna take all the necessary steps to make things work, to work out. And, and, and God forbid that we have to go and end up in the federal courts with something that we, that we want to avoid. And we think this is the right steps in the right direction. And we do believe that we're gonna make some progress and with your help, I think that things will work out the way it needs to. You heard what Pastor Neal was saying, you heard Ms. Tina was saying, and everything they're saying is factually true, and it can be backed up by the analysis of impediments taken by the federal government out of, out of uh, Texas, I mean, Jay Quarles. And uh, we thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Absolutely, no, thank you. Thank you for the time and for the work that you're doing. One thing before you go that I would like to see, and I mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. uh, the economic pie in Valdostalans County, Georgia has been proven to be unjust, unfair, and discriminatory. These patterns and practices have existed for too long while only benefiting those in the clique and among the slicks. Today, concerned citizens are demanding immediate change. St. John 832, Joel 2 verse 1. GBR not mention the ordinance that's on the books that uh, that needs to be removed when it pertains to historic preservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That really hurts us in this town. Mm -hmm. um, there are you, you have just over the just over the bridge here. It's the oldest church in Valdosta. Mm -hmm. It's the site of much of uh, what occurred with the, with the uh, civil rights movement. It's not historically preserved. The way this particular uh, ordinance is written, uh, it's established, of course, that the mayor and the city council uh, has the ability to decide what's historically preserved and not. It, it, the criteria is a lot of latitude. It excludes a lot of our uh, uh, African-American entities. Uh, some of the oldest churches, some of the oldest uh, mm -hmm. uh, dwellings need to be preserved. Um, and what it does is it buys into the critical uh, racism theory where it's basically erasing every black entity in every city to appear as if none of these things ever occurred. 
uh, Mitchell's Barbecue, just blocks away from here, was the site uh, where Dr. King and other civil rights leaders sat and strategized. Uh, the very week that I uh, made a request that it be historically preserved, it was magically torn down a week later. Uh, one of the things that I, I look at, a relative of mine just passed away, uh, State Representative Joe Neal in mm -hmm. Columbia, South Carolina. That is my cousin. And one of the things he, he spoke for South Carolina, South Carolina General Assembly and said was that uh, as a nation of people, as two groups of people dwelling in the same spot, I have my white brethren who have a legacy that they hold dear and there's a lot of compassion for. But one man's legacy cannot overshadow another man's legacy and erase it. And so therefore, while I respect your legacy, now I need the same sense of compassion for my legacy. While it is marred with the blood of slaves and marred with the blood of the Jim Crow era and the, the, uh, uh, the atrocities that have occurred, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of love, and there is also a legacy that there's great, a great deal of compassion for. It must they must coexist together mm -hmm. and be properly preserved. So I hope that you'll uh, help us in removing that uh, ordinance as well as uh, extending to the African-American community uh, more prosperity to help balance out the legacy that we both, we should both stand as, as one, one group together. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. I didn't want to speak, that was your time. And, uh, we got to get him over to the university, and I got the National Community Development Week a proclamation to read right now as well. Excuse me, which fits right into the conversation. Give a name My name is uh, Mark Leibel. I'm Chief of Staff to Senator Warnock, based out of Washington, D.C. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You had me calling Mr. Heaton all night long. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Heaton had to finally tell me I'm no longer with the uh, sure, Okay. Cars. So, yeah. Kristen leads the region for us down here. And like I said, we're going to be hiring somebody in Valdosta to uh, a, a, a narrower region you, to be based out of here. And so, it's important for us to have somebody who ha will have an appreciation of that history and help us with it. When do we get started? I said, when, 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 when do I sign it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to be back here. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I told you you were close to getting up. Show them your building. Good. 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 Good.